morning. Nope, afternoon by four minutes. Sorry about that. Um, it's 12.04 here in Gainesville, Florida. Today I am going to start um, a train, a, a scale model wooden train. Um, I've already done parts of it. I will do them over again so that you can see how I do it. Um, one thing I didn't put in the write-up was uh, thought process in back of it, and that was kind of extreme anyway. So I'll kind of go through that right now. Um, first thing you have to do, unless you have a real good imagination, is find a picture of a locomotive um, to at least get an idea of what's going on with them. Um, the newer locos, the diesel electrics, are fairly streamlined. You can kind of knock one of those out fairly quick. The old steam jobs, uh, they had all sorts of different styles, different size wheels, different combination of wheels, um, different boiler patterns, just on and on and on and on and on. They were feats of marvelous engineering. One thing that all rail cars need are a set of trucks. So we will create those first, and then I will save that. I'll show you how to do that. As save as a component um, so we can use it when we get into the other cars like the tender and, and whatever other car. Um, first thing for those of you who are totally scared crackless about searching on the internet I'm going to show you how to do it. I'll start screen share and we will start looking for locomotive or steam locomotive pictures. And here we go. So up at the top, I am just going to type in steam locomotive and hit enter. Now, Google comes back, and I'm using anything other than Internet Explorer. Internet Explorer sucks. It's dangerous. It's no good. Get away from it. Row up. Okay, steam locomotive, steam lose things. Here, here's some pictures down here. Here are vi images up here. And all you will get is a screen full of pictures. <coughs> and you'll notice that most of them really don't show much. I'll open this one. Um, this kind of cutaway, that's kind of cute. But, you know, it doesn't really show what the undercarriage looks like. So we'll close this one down, open a few more drawings. <coughs> This one is another cutaway that's very pretty. Um, <coughs> it's what a time for my bronchitis to start up. You can at least see some of the base features. Close this one down. I am looking for one in particular that it took me a while to find. And it's really, that's not it, but it's getting close. It's some old rusty hulks. They're sitting. Um, basically upside down. Here they are. No, they're right side up. Okay. Um, I think this might be a Russian train. Doesn't make any difference. It gives us an idea that holding the drive wheels up, there is a pretty good hunk of steel under there. And that's kind of what I was looking for to start with. Um, so now that we know some of the underneath components, I'm going to try to close this one out. Let's just go back arrow. All right. And let's see if we can get a side view of an old... Um, it's got a lot of wheels under it. Don't want one that big. I'm looking like a 4, 4, 2, maybe. Um, four wheels in the front, four drivers, and two in the rear. If I don't find those, that's okay. I'll just come up with a decent one. Um, this will work. Just to give us an idea, that this is a 4, 6, maybe it even tells me here. Nope, 
doesn't say. It. I'm thinking it's a four six four, but I'm not sure. Here's another one, kind of an oblique view. This is a nice one. This is a a four four. So we'll just keep that picture in mind. And we'll resize this. And here is my workbench. I'm going to get rid of component one. And one thing that I found out is every time, and off uh, quite a few times through when you're working on something in SketchUp, is go into this window, model preferences, and purge unused, and then hit fix problems. No problems were found, but at least now I'm starting from a really blank sheet of paper. Now, if I get that to go away. So, one thing we don't really know is how big our train is going to be. If we were doing it to scale, it would make a lot more sense. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some small circles. I'm going to create an eighth inch circle. I'm going to create another eighth inch circle. And now I'm going to create a five, no, too big. Let's do a three, yeah, 3.5 by two rectangle. I'm going to make this a component. Um, my hotkeys are control, or shift C. Here we have component one. I'm going to make this a component. We have component two. And I'll make this a component, and we have component three. Now, this one I'm going to make active uh, by double clicking mouse button one, and I'm going to extrude it up half an inch. We can always change these later. Now, this one I'm going to use for an axle. So I'm going to extrude this one about five inches. Start the movement in the direction you want to go and let her rip. Now, I'm going to take this one. I'm going to make it five sixteenths. And then I will actually create a copy of it. So we'll do several things at once here. Let's, okay, go ahead and extrude it. 5 sixteenths, and you'll notice I'm I'm keying in both um, decimal and fractional units over here. It will recognize it. Something else it will recognize is if you are using plywood or particle board. In fact, I will just make another one to show you. Um, since actually I may want the base of this particle board. I just thought of that. New thought. Um, let's do a 6 by 3.5. Shift C to make it a component. Accept it. Make it active. Double mouse click on mouse button 1. Pull it up. And I want this to be... Let's say a metric, our, a metric equivalent to our three-quarter inch, which is 19. I think it's actually 18 millimeters. So we'll type in 18, and then after it, little m's. And it comes up to be sort of almost 45 64 But now you have a common-sized piece of MDF, um, provided it is 18 and not 19. I'm pretty sure it's 18 because they never give you more than you buy. It's always less. And the width and length are in imperial because I made them that way. But it's nice to know that you can automatically get a metric dimension by just typing your unit's dimension and then mm afterwards. Okay, now back to our little stubby shaft here. Actually, I goofed up, but that's okay. I can still use it. 
because when I go to, let me move my outliner box, like I constantly remind her, this is your, your working bin. This is what you've got going on. Always use it. I'm going to go to offset. And when I take that, hey, and it worked. Um, let's offset that 5 sixteenths. And now I'm going to take that and I'm going to extrude it back down. At least I want to try to. Come on. Okay, well, let's type it in. There. Now, I have a wheel with a hole in it. Let's see if I can get rid of that bottom one or if I've got issues here. Okay, let me remove this one, and I'll take this one, since it's still valid, and I'm going to push-pull it up. There. It's probably too thick. That's not too bad. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take that. I'm going to make two copies of this. First, I'm going to take it and just move it off in space because I don't want to use that one. I'm going to make this one unique. And how I moved it, I'll show you when I move this one up. It's a, it's it's not it's selected. It's not active over here. I'm going to take the move tool, hold the control key down, and you will notice that my cursor now has a little plus by it. That means you're adding things. So I'm going up to green axes, and let's go 2.5. And I'm also going to move my axle. And I'm going to try to move it so that it is center in component. And I'm going to try to put it so it is in so it's centered on this hole. And usually it doesn't work that well. I'll keep it. Okay, now I'll do it again. And now I'm going to just move it down a little bit just to get some excess through there and now I'll try to move this one to the it's apparently and it is right now the top so I'm gonna have to rotate these things I'm gonna try to move this from the center of that circle to the center of this circle and it worked hot dog this is my lucky day guy you normally have to fight with this for quite a while and I'm going to pull that down quite a ways. Now, this is, as far as I'm concerned, aimed the wrong direction. Um, it's just being a little OCD on my part. Um, but I like it when I hit, I'll show you. When I hit top view, I don't want to see the end of the shaft. I want to see the top of my engine frame or in this case my trucks. Okay, now I'm going to I've got that highlighted. I'm going to select rotate. Select the point to start from, a lever point. And you'll notice that I goofed up. I need to make this an assembly. Shift C, I now have my axle assembly. So now I'll go back in to rotate that point, that point. Rotate it 90, and then I'm going to move my truck carriage from the midpoint of it to my zero point. 
I like things on zero. It lets me keep track of what I'm doing. Now, I'm going to grab this thing and just kind of move it over there because I want to do some thinking as I'm going. Ooh, get back here. Now, let's save this. First thing I'm going to save it as Steam Loco 2. Because I'm going to reuse this after I make a component here. Now, um, let's put a guideline on our, our truck um, uh, support. Probably not what I called it a few minutes ago, but really doesn't make any difference. And we'll just do that. Now let's go up to the center line. And that, I believe, is going to be too long. Um, go in and let's put some dimensions on this. Three and a half. I really didn't expect it was going to be that weird. I thought I keyed in a valid number. Okay, first got to fix this. Now, that little tilde means you're not quite on a good dimension. So I'm going to drag this thing out until the tilde goes away. Now, I have it 3164. If I bring it over 564, one and nine sixteenths, let's make it another eighth of an inch. Not an eighth of an inch. Let's make it an, an even eighth of an inch, which is adding a sixteenth to it. And, of course, now I've just dragged the whole thing off my zero. Right now I'm going to leave it. Okay. Now, um, I'm also going to make this face. I'm going to shorten it three quarters of an inch. And I'm going to copy this one forward some. Now let's go back to our picture. <laughs> let's find one where we're looking more sideways at it. Uh, let's look at this one and see what we can see. Clear up. Um, no, nope, that doesn't help. Sometimes it is difficult to find exactly the kind of picture you're looking for. Um, most of these things are very elaborate and very, like, neat, so that you're looking at them um, obliquely coming at you or things like that. It's hard to find this straight one. See, here's the front trucks right here. Um, I was trying to rotate it. You can't do that on a picture, Bruce. Um, so the front truck on that usually extends out past the nose of the train, but in back of the pilot. And I'm trusting Mr. Clive, Cl <laughs> Clive Cussler to have used the right term in one of his books. Um, he had his detective saying cowcatcher, and the, um, the engineer laughed at him and said, how are you going to catch somebody when you don't even know what a pilot is? So I will accept that. Okay, let's go back into... That ain't it. Hmm. Where am I at? Oh, 
I'm here. Okay. Um, we'll downsize this. And what I will do is I will take this truck and move it after I get um, my this, this axle combination, after I get my truck a little bit better. I want to move this up about 3 16 And do I have a reason for that? Absolutely not. I just wanted it a little higher so that when I put the axle in, it doesn't look really squirrely. So I need to go back to my tape measure tool, create a, another guide there. And I'm going to take this guide, and I'm going to try to move it. Let's do it 3 eighths. Now, I can take and create a circle here on this component. And it's going to be huge. I'm going to make it 0.125. I didn't think it should be that small. Let me, let me put a dimension on here. It shouldn't have been that small because I keep keyed in a radius. So we'll try doing it this way. I have an object here. Let's do entity info and let's see if it will. I'm pretty sure I didn't key, key in 116. So let's key in 0.125. Bingo! Now we'll take this and we will do one other thing. Let's go to the front of this and create another guideline. And we'll take we'll take that guideline and come this way 0.375. Now I'm going to take this circle and the surface is created and I'm going to copy them up to my other guide point. Turn off Entity Info because it's blinking and being confusing. Now let's take this and I find out that I was not in the right. Alright, I thought I was active. We'll take this and this and this and this and we're going to make a group out of it, which is Shift G on my machine. And we'll find out what component that is. And we'll take this group and just drag it up into that component. And now we will explode that group. This is something that's really handy to use um, groups for. Is when you put something on the wrong, wrong feature, you can move it around and then explode it. And you can go back into it and extrude it through and go over here and we have holes all the way through. Now I would like to take one of my axles and move that combination. Let's try to do it. That's a center of components. So let's see if it'll work. I am just doing really, really well today with getting the right stuff to move. Trust me, normally it doesn't work this good. Okay, it's not completely centered. I'm really not that interested in that right now. Okay, let's try moving this one. Let's try moving it from that center point to that center point. And then we'll drag it. and move it over in there. Now, basically we have our front truck, but they need to be able to pivot. So I am going to put some more grid lines on here. I'm going to move that one to the center line. 
I hope that's centered. And I'm going to create one here, and I'm going to move it to the other, to this longitudinal center line. There. Now, we need a hole in here and pro probably a counter bore or at least a counter sink or something like that. So let's put a small hole in it. Um, ooh, that's the whole thing. Let's come out here. Um, for the time being, we're just going to make this a quarter inch circle. <coughs> And I'm going to have to do the same thing again because I'm not paying attention while I'm talking. Shift G, drag that back up into component one, explode it, now we can drag that down, push pull, extrude through our area. Now, we can leave it like this and just glue a pin in the bottom and put a retainer or something on top, but I'd like it to be a little bit prettier than that. So I'm going to take my offset tool again, and it's trying to grab anything except what I want. Offset. Oh, interesting. There, I finally got it. I want to take it out to half inch or so. That way, if I want to put bolts in it with washers, I got some room. Now, this is upside down. Okay, that's the way we're looking at it. So our, our wheels are on the bottom, the, the overlap. They're a little bit in front, not too much, but some. So I'm just going to take this surface and push push it, extrude it away from me about 5 sixteenths. And like I've said, I'm coming up with these dimensions off the top of my head. Um, I'm just trying to do something that looks good. Now I'm going to save this again. I'm going to save it as Loco2. But now I'm going to save it as... And I'm going to go up onto my drive into the SketchUp 8 folder. Not my models, but the actual program folder. And I've created my own personal component file. And everybody should do this. Because the more you use this thing, the more you start creating things. And it's easier if you've got a whole bunch of stuff to know that at least it is supposed to be in this file someplace, rather than, oh yeah, did I use that on a Steam Loco, or did I use it on my uh, merry-go-round, or, man, I can't remember where it is. Bookkeeping on this can get to be a real pain. So I'm going to say Loco Trucks, and hit Save. Now, I'm going to open that I'm going to get rid of everything else. I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to get rid of this and this. And I'm going to get rid of my guidelines. Edit, delete guides. Save it again. Now I will, since I, I just was working at it, I'm going to reopen my Steam Loco 2. Under or in our picture, there are several ways to connect the um, boiler section to the frame. But what we need to do first is have our frame there. So I'm going to take this part. Let me get rid of all my guides again. Edit, delete guides. And I'm going to select all of that. I'm going to make this another component. Shift C. I'm not going to call it trucks because I don't care right now. But I am going to move it so that it's centered on my 
working axes there. Now, I'm going to take my bed, for lack of a better term, and I'm going to take it from my midpoint, and I'm going to place it here. And I'm also going to take, I want to make the surface, first I'm going to put some dimensions on here. Um, dimension, that line, six inches, that line, three and a half. And I already did this one metrically, so I'm not going to change it. It'll work. So I'm going to take my extrude tool, and I'm going to pull this out using my dimensions. I just rotated it so we could see my dimensions. I'm going to make it eight and a quarter. Um, so I want it. 2.25. I got that by looking down on my distance down here and just consciously rounding it off. Now we will take this again and we will move it from here. Don't do that. One of the great teachers on here, <laughs> Charles Neal, knocked a, knocked a hunk of wood off while he was working on our project and he just looked at the camera and kind of shrugged and said, don't do that. That makes sense. Okay, back to my midpoint, and I'm just going to take it back and try to get the top midpoint here. Now, that's beautiful. Hit the space bar to release everything, and let's save this again. Now we need this axle assembly larger. Um, I'm going to actually create an axle assembly. Shift C. And you notice I'm not worrying about the names. I mean, I can find, if anything I want to know, I can click it. If I'm confused about what I'm working on, if it's called an axle or if it's called component, I can find out what it is by just either clicking in the outliner or clicking on my model. It gives me the names. It tells me what I'm looking at. So I want this. I want to make it active and I want to move my little wheel up. Except I didn't grab it. Grabbed the wrong thing. I want to move this vertically four inches. Granted, it's way too big, but I'm also going to move this up a little bit. And it's still going to be way too big because I need it bigger to be able to make it smaller easier than if it's smaller to be able to make it bigger. Now, if you followed that, you're probably better than anybody else. But I think my wife did. She's pretty good at my weirdos. <laughs> she agreed. Okay. Now, I'm going to take this and I'm going to rotate it along here, 90 degrees, and I'm going to pull it down so right now. So this is on the corner of my box, end in component. I don't want that. I want center. Now, drive wheels are usually a whole lot larger than the trucks, the truck wheels. So first got to make this active. And this is one thing that I don't, another one of many things that I don't like the way SketchUp does. Because um, I just remembered after I made this thing, um, I'm going to use scale, which is this icon right here. It says scale. And I made it too far. I am. I have two components on here that are the same same name. Whatever I do to one should happen to the other, except in scale. I'm going to select this one. You can see it says red green scale about opposite point. I don't want that. I want it around the center. So I'm going to hit the control key, and you can see the other red grip jumps to the middle. Now. Something that's weird, 
you actually see several things that are going on, is um, I can make it skinny, I can make it oblong that way. I have to go down here and start typing, and I'm just going to make it 2, comma 2, and see how much bigger it is. That doesn't look too bad, but my other component didn't change. That's a component 5, this is a component 5, and now they're different. Bad idea. Really, really, really a bad idea. And also, you can see that using scale also increased my axle shaft opening size, which is really not something that I like. So let's control Z several times, go back to where we were, and let's see if I can just make this outside surface bigger under scale. We'll try scale. This is interesting. By doing it inside um, my, com my component, now both sides are getting bigger. Unfortunately, so is the center. I don't want that. Control Z. Oh, and just in case you're wondering, push-pull doesn't work on circular faces. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try to grab that face, and I'm going to try to offset that face. Um... Three seven five, yeah, that's a bigger one. So now I've got to push pull or extrude this face over to here. And while I'm at it, I want to see if I can change under entity entity info if I can change this to um, again. Five sixteenths. Let's do it a quarter. And we'll do that same thing to this one. And I didn't do this on my original, but it's something they figured out I, I want to do eventually. I'm going to make this, I'm going to pull this face out a little bit to give a better hub. And I want to do the same thing here. If I don't get it exactly the same, that's no big deal. Now I also want to do that same thing. I want to go to this entity info up here. Now, those may not be quite the same thing, but that's all right. Um, a lot of this is just doing this to have fun. If you get too overly excited about it, it takes the fun away. Now, I have a drive wheel, uh, drive wheel axle combination that I can make some pretty neat things going on on the inside of these wheels using a scroll saw. So now I'm going to take that component and I'm going to move it over, except I didn't get the component because I got was inside the component there. Now take it, move it sideways, and all of a sudden you can see that, oh, I wasn't too big in the first place. But actually, yes, I was because, let's see, let's look at a picture again.
Um, can we find one? Let's try this one. The drive wheels. I could have been able to answer, answer this one without looking. I just wasn't thinking. The drive wheels have to be in the same plane as the front trucks. Otherwise, one of the two sets of them ain't going to be on the rails. So, um, go back to our model. Down this one, and here we are again. So what I need to do is move this whole assembly down. And I thought I was active in it, and I wasn't. Move it straight down and move it down a little bit farther so we are at least under our frame. Now I'm going to try to take this set of trucks and move them. This is going to be kind of a redundant move. You'll see why after I get it done. Uh, if I were really thinking sharp, sharp on it, I would be able to come up with a better idea. But right now I'm trying to get these, this whole thing moved and kind of in position. Because I don't know if you can tell it, but I can tell my voice is about gone. Okay. I want that point. Give me the center point. In point and in component. Wrong one. You can see it's grabbing everything except the center point. This is a problem I usually have. I'm glad it's doing it. Okay, let's just try the bottom point just to get it close. There. That's not too bad. Now what I need to do is bring this wheel over kind of in line with the other one. So I'll select it and I will just drag it along. Come on, stay on the axes. Doesn't want to. Close enough. Believe me, nobody hates the word close enough more than me. But for concepts, sometimes close enough is close enough. And you'll also see that I need my trucks lowered down a long ways. So now I'm going to copy the same thing forward so I have a set of drive wheels. And since my voice is going, I am going to stop at that. And tomorrow I'll pick up and trim some of this up. I'll move the front trucks down. I'll put a spacer in here. Then I'll put my... Uh, big cylinder and taper both ends for the boiler and put my cradle up in here. Thanks for listening. Thanks for being here. I hope you have fun with SketchUp and with woodworking. But I will come back. Turn screen share off. There. I'll come back and at least say goodbye and thank you so that you can see me. Ooh, is there a nasty glare in back of me? Okay. Gone. Bye-bye. <laughs>